pretty sure everybody in here has heard that you really need to do governance and half the companies really don't have the bandwidth to go into defining the process. Um, what I want to take a stab at today is to see, you know, identify topics that I would consider important for governance and that, you know, if you did the due diligence up front, will really help make SharePoint a better platform for your organization. Um, we all have heard about a lot of success stories with SharePoint. I believe a lot of us have also heard about how SharePoint has failed at so many different institutions. Um, and this could be one of the reasons why that has been happening. So defining governance. What does governance mean for us, right? Uh, I'm pretty sure everybody understands the, the definition is going to be the fact that we have identified rules and guidelines of how our SharePoint environment should be built, should be managed, and should be you know utilized so that it can become a success in our environment, right? One of the key things that I learned from a recent client lately was, you know, they really tried to separate governance from implementation. And the definition said, governance should only tell us what needs to happen and when it needs to happen, but does not necessarily define how it needs to happen. All we need to know is this needs to happen. We don't really care about how we do this, whether you do this with PowerShell or STCADM or you write custom code for this or, you know, anything. Governance is just laying the foundation of, you know, saying these things need to happen when certain situations occur, right? So it's kind of vague. I think it's, it's a very thin line. Um, it leaves a lot to open discussion. Uh, for example, a lot of my clients feel like, you know, so you're going to tell us how to... Um, shoot somebody but you're not going to tell us how to use this thing or how to basically uh, solve this issue and it was kind of vague for me but I'm going to try in this session here and ongoing sessions to actually try and give out solutions of what needs to happen when it needs to happen and how you do this stuff right one other thing that's important is that governance is not a one-time deal you can't really say that you spend two weeks up front or two months up front to define governance for your organization and that's going to be your, you know, code book for the rest of your SharePoint lifetime. Um, I think SharePoint governance is something that has to be an ongoing process. You start off with what you know best uh, from you within your organization and then revisit that every six months or a year to say, okay, what could have been done better? What needs to be changed within our governance so our SharePoint environment can be a better success within the organization? Cool. James, I'm not sure about this thing here, but if people want to ask questions, should we wait until the end, or do you want to? I'm done um, at the end. I'm sorry? Okay. Yeah, yeah, I wasn't sure yeah. if people can ask questions in between, or do we want to wait until the end? Well, because it's such a short demo, I think it would be best to, to wait to the end. Yeah. Sounds good. Sounds good. So here's the here are my favorite or here's what I'm thinking are my sections on how I would do governance. More very important sections. Uh, I'm pretty sure this is not an exhaustive loop. I'm sure there's other people come up with come uh, one or more topic that needs governance. But these are my five areas of governance, like you know infrastructure that includes everything from server build to service applications to service accounts, search, uh, everything that you know you would think about from the server side would show up in the infrastructure section. Application development would be another section where you really need to do a lot of governance, um, especially now with SharePoint 2010 because there's just so much options um, with the Visual Studio, with InfoPath, with SharePoint Designer, being able to JavaScript, jQuery. How are you going to do governance around application development? Security and compliance, you know, SharePoint security has always been a concern for people. Um, and even though it's DOD certified now, a lot of people are like, how do we manage security around SharePoint? Can I put PII data on top of this? Uh, how about, you know, other sensitive data, health information, medical records, stuff like that. Um, compliance, how do you make sure that SharePoint can stay compliant with your organization in terms of content being put in there? Even though it's not sensitive data, is it offensive data? Is it, you know, data in terms of confidential data? How can you make sure that your sites are going to be, com you know, compliant with your company's policies? Training, once again, another part of uh, SharePoint or any product that gets often bypassed, you know, um, we do not invest enough in training. People don't learn how to utilize the technology, and then it doesn't become a success at all. Um, and communications, um, I think this is something, again, that we hear with almost every project that we do is communication is the key to success, right, for any project, whether it's SharePoint or not. 
communication is always the key to success the more we stay in touch with our team member the better chances are that we can be successful so how do you define governance around communication so a lot for us to discuss um, like I said we're gonna kick off with infrastructure and even there I don't think I'll be able to cover everything into this topic and uh, hopefully we'll have follow-up sessions for that later on so within infrastructure you know this is my first last list of things on how i would manage governance the first things that i would really um, govern so that i can build uh, the environment successfully and just use it um, that has to be governance around server build how do you build your dev uat production environments um, what kind of service accounts you used uh, which ship on 2010 now because there are so many more services how do you manage services on the servers how do you keep track of them SQL Server, you know, if you are building a SQL Server environment or if you're building a, a large farm, how do you do governance around SQL clustering uh, and the database management that goes behind it? Uh, web applications, you know, when to create a web application, how often do you need a web application? Do you really need an extra web application? Site collections, you know, um, and how to manage them from a content database perspective so that you don't end up in a situation where you have a one terabyte content database or you have 100 databases that are each only 15 gigs or 20 gigs per se, right? Um, governance around backup and recovery, disaster recovery, change management. Once you build the original infrastructure, how do you uh, maintain changes in the environment? Security management, um, how to make sure that you have your eyes on every site that goes around there and make sure there is no security leaks going on. Um, if you have, uh, if you're from a large organization, you probably have multiple you know, environments, development, QA, production, how do you keep them in sync? How do you work across environments so that when solutions go from dev to QA to production, uh, there'll be minimal headaches over there, right? At the end, and the most important, documentation. Now, I'm a, I'm a technical guy like most of you over there, and sadly for me, documentation also always comes to the end, but it's probably the key, the biggest key to success, you know, uh, in our environments now where, where resources are being changed often, if you don't have proper documentation, there is no knowledge sharing from one resource to another resource. And from an organization's perspective, that could lead to disasters when you know one resource has left, and the other one comes in, and it takes a month for that person to, to get up to speed on what has been done before. Kind of thing, right? So that being said, you know, from a server build perspective, um, here are some tips and tricks that I can think of on what should be going right. Um, the first few points from an IT perspective will seem very obvious, uh, you know, something that you guys probably always do, uh, but just to re-emphasize them. As we go it's a bit more detail into the SharePoint specific things, you know, there'll be m something more of interest. But regardless, these are still things that should definitely be, you know, taken into account and not, you know, overlooked here. First and foremost, right, access to servers and central admin should be limited to SharePoint administrators only. Um, a lot of times, you know, depending on your organization size, you know, larger organizations definitely have that process in place. Uh, in short, smaller organizations, you generally have uh, kind of like a, a free will. You know, if the developer knows more about SharePoint, they might say, just give us an access to the SharePoint environment so we can do a quick fix on any application and deploy it. Um, I think that's a, a big security breach and chances of somebody coming in just basically blowing up your whole environment over there. Then from SharePoint 2010 perspective, we definitely have the new managed accounts now that help us run the SharePoint services. Um, you know, follow Microsoft guidance on making sure that you use separate accounts, um, you know, as much as needed. In the SharePoint 2007 world, there were a lot of people um, who would just leverage a single account for all services, even the SSP in there. Uh, it would definitely make your, you know, environment run successfully, no doubt about it. But definitely there's you know a single point of failure or a breach of security can be possible so with SharePoint 2010 you know you know just go and look at the Microsoft site there's about you know an explanation of about five to six different accounts that you might want to use for your SharePoint farm um, six is probably an overkill but I can definitely recommend at least four separate accounts uh, one would be for SharePoint farm there'll be one for search there'll be one to run the application pool and there'll be one more for service applications I would definitely think that you should at least have a minimum of those four service accounts um, to better manage your environment and not to give one single account too much permission at the farm level or at the server level. Also the fact that you know should never, 
ever use individual user accounts. So I should never be using Nilesh Mehta's account to run the timer job service in any manner, right? Uh, could lead to, you know, once again, if I'm leaving the company and my account's expired, that could cause issues. Um, with SharePoint 2010, you can also manage passwords automatically for us. Uh, an interesting feature, I have been a very conservative person before. I know that if sh I control my SharePoint environment, I can do a better job. Um, so I always like to keep information in my hand. Uh, but I think this value add in here, if you were to use separate service accounts for search or service applications or for the IS app pool, to have SharePoint managed password for that, so you cannot run into issues with that. But I would still stick to the point that I would not want SharePoint to manage my farm admin account password. I think it's too dangerous to uh, to let SharePoint do that uh, because once SharePoint manages the password, even you don't know what the password is. And in a, in a DR situation or you know when you need to do something really funky with SharePoint, uh, you would need that password. So that's just my personal preference. I'm sure the other uh, people on this team here on this board can weigh in on that later on. Um, and also, like I said, multiple service accounts, not all service accounts need to be local server admins, not all, not all service accounts need to be, you know, SharePoint farm admin accounts. So make sure you read up documentation on, you know, what needs the, you know, I, the farm admin account, you know, I would definitely give local admin privileges, even though when you give a farm admin account local admin privileges, you go into the health check, it constantly keeps complaining, this account has um, local admin rights, and it should not have that. Um, I just don't see it working any other way. But uh, make sure that you understand what the least permissions uh, or least restrictive permissions are necessary, and then you know apply them accordingly. The next thing comes is when you're trying to build different environments, dev, UAT, production, make sure that you have separate service accounts for each environment and not leverage the same one. Um, if you use the same one, again, a security breach, if you know access to, if you have access to dev environment, that means you have access to production and you can cause issues over that, right? Um, recommendations from Microsoft are always to keep SharePoint update with the latest service pack and, and see use as soon as they come out. Uh, my personal recommendation with service packs would be you better wait for at least a quarter before you apply a service pack. Um, in the meanwhile, you know, you get the rest of the world do the beta for you. Thank you for listening to a highlighted segment of SharePoint Shop Talk. Join us live and ask your own questions every Thursday, 12.30 to 1.30 p.m. You may also join our group on LinkedIn at SharePoint Shop Talk. That's our group name. And we hope that you can join us. We look forward to the continued sharing of SharePoint knowledge.